Okay, so we're back on top right now. So what I'm gonna do is start working from passenger side all the way to the driver's side and removing things. So the first thing, uh, you should have already have all your cowling and um, the top pieces of the engine covers taken off already. So all you gotta do now is just go ahead and start taking the cover off for the ECU compartment. So see how they have these little tabs right here? They should be here, here, and over here. So go ahead and just like slide this over to the unlock position. Mine's already in there. Unlock position, and then you go ahead and just use a flathead and just pull these up right here. And then it'll come right off. So this is how the tabs look when they're open, like so. So down, up. So that's what you're trying to pretty much accomplish right there. So this is the ECU in all its glory right here, and it's connected with two uh, connectors right here. So one here, one over here. And the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is remove the con remove the top pieces of these plugs that run along the firewall of the car right here. So to get access to get easily pull them up, pull these out, what you're gonna go ahead and do is just like push this back and lift up. Let me see if I can do it. Pull it back. I can't do it one hand, but yeah, the premise, the premise of it is like, see how this one is? You just push to the side and lift up and they come right out. So once you push this back right here, you could lift this, this outside piece right here. So it's not connected fully. So you can lift it up and then you have room to go ahead and squeeze your hand and take them all off. So I have the wires all out right now on this side that I pulled out. So I have this piece right here that I have to take off of this bracket right here. So all I do is just slide it up because see it's connected to this outside harness going that way. So this won't be staying inside the engine compartment. So I removed it off by just going ahead and just pushing this this piece right here in to the towards the firewall, towards the car, and just pulled up and it came right out. So the next part we're gonna go ahead and do is just take these sub connectors off the ECU. So how we're gonna do that is you go ahead and use like a tip of the flathead and like stick this in and push it down like that way and there that way and over here down like that and over here down like that. And once you do that, you go ahead and pull this piece right here. You see how it has like a little grooves to put your finger and you just pull like that and the same thing over here and you pull out like that. So it's gonna come out some and it's gonna push the connectors up a little bit. And that pretty much will disengage it off the ECU connectors. So as you can see, it could come out about this far, like so, and you see the, it's starting to pull up. So yeah, that's the sub connector off right here. So pretty much it's trying to disengage off of these pieces right here, these prongs. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the same side over there and then pretty much could move this over to the side. Now with both of the ECU connectors off, pretty much we're gonna go over to this one right here and we're gonna remove this wire right here that's coming off towards the body. She's connected down to here. So what we're gonna do is flip it around and right here where it's connected, you see that tab right here, right up here? We're gonna go ahead and just like push it to the left and then pull out and the connector will come right out. So this is how the connector is gonna come out. See, it's only have like three more parts left to take out. So since this is in the way right here, I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, same thing we did before with the connectors right here, push down and pull this out and we're gonna take this off and then everything will slide back out and then go ahead and put this connector back in when you're done. So I use my small flathead and push towards that way and push both sides down right here. And then now just pull out and this will slide out now like so. So now it's over here on this side. So now we're just gonna take off these fuses right here, the connectors. So we push down on this piece right here and pull up. And that goes over there with the harness, with the engine when we pull it. And then over here, 
you're pretty much gonna have to use something like uh, the flathead and push it in here and then pull up. I already did it, so this might take you a little bit or just me just being, <laughs> I don't know, idiotic about it. I can't take it out right, but yeah, you just flip it up and I'm not even sure how this goes in. But the main part is just to get this piece out right here because that's going with the harness over here. When these pieces loose now, all we're gonna do is pretty much already pre-lifted these up, but you pull these tabs right here and pull these up, and then you can slide these out like so. And yeah, stays on like that, and then do the same thing for here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take off the power connect off the power supply from the car. So what you're gonna do is just use your one of your fingers. Actually, just use your middle finger and just use your thumb and pull forward like that and it comes right off so here. and then right here we're going to use a number 10 and a 13 to take these off right here these are disconnected now and i went ahead and just put the screws back on there so that we don't lose them so yeah so these could come off now with the rest of the body panels right here so you just like pop these up pop these up and swing them over here with the engine but not ready for that yet so everything is disconnected off the body of the car that's connected to the engine on this side well except the motor mount right here but that's for last right there what's interesting is i have a lot more connections on this car compared to what's on that one like it was way easier to take off the ecu and disconnect everything off the body using that car but what i'm thinking is i'm gonna have to go ahead and take the wiring harness and take it off this motor and put it on a new motor because i don't think i can use that the motor harness that's on the new engine on this car because yeah i can't put less connectors when i have more points inside here so that's weird i don't know why it's like that i don't know if other um n54s are like that but the only difference i could tell between each car is that mines have comfort access and that one doesn't so is the additional comfort access resulting in having all these extra wires and um, fuses and stuff like that? I have no idea. So I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna have to look into it and do some research to see what's the deal with that. But for now, I think I most likely I'm gonna have to go ahead and switch the harness. So yeah, so I'd rather just do that when the, both motors are out so I could go ahead and just make sure everything is put back in the right spot and all that good stuff. So in comparison, this is all the stuff that came off on the new motor. So yeah, I definitely have gonna have to like switch these harnesses over. And it actually doesn't look too bad. It just seems like it's just to the injectors and to the coil packs these wires go to. And then everything is, seems to be pretty self-contained. So once I disconnected off these sensors and stuff like that, I should be good to go. So it don't seem like it's gonna be a pain in the butt like I thought it would be but so everything pretty much taken off that's needed to be taken off except the motor mount I'm gonna go ahead and move over to this side and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just take this uh, fuel sensor off so on this side is like a tab so you pull it and push back and disconnects it right here and then I'm gonna use a pliers and go ahead and turn it and take it off the fuel rail Turn it that way, just loosen it. Loosen it like so. So the only reason why I'm taking it off because when I took the motor out of this car over here, what happened was the sensor on here broke. So I'm assuming when the engine was tilted, it went ahead and just broke it off like this piece right here. So I'm trying to pretty much alleviate that from happening on this one so I don't have two sensors out. So this is pretty much what it looks like. So what happened was it snapped right here in this piece right here, this plastic part. So all I'm left with now is just this little nub right here inside of it. So yeah, it smells a little like fuel, but this car has been off for like a long time. There's actually some fuel still in here, but it's nothing really dripping out. So pretty much take this out right here set it aside i have to put that in a safer spot but for now that's what i'm gonna put it until i'm finished recording 
All right, so with everything taken off on this part, we're just gonna go ahead and start removing stuff on this part over here. But since I got some stuff relocated, pretty much, I don't remember how it's situated on the stock car, but I know the power stand reservoir is over here. And yeah, I don't think you have to remove it off the car yet. But yeah, I'm gonna have to take mines off and pretty much take off all of this, the DCIs, and then I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the throttle body also. So these connections and take this intake manifold off. And yeah, once I'm able to access all that, pretty much the engine should be ready to pull out in a few steps. Well, after taking off the other motor mount that's down there. So I'm gonna start disconnecting all this stuff right here. So first thing, go ahead and take off, loosen this up. Pop out. And then this piece right here. Pop it out to the side. And then pretty much gonna go ahead and use a flathead. Pop that up. That's out. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh use a pretty much use a what I use is I just use a wrench. Or I think that's what they call it. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> and then turn it and then pull up and then do the same thing, turn it and pull up, and these come right off right here. But these now turn to the left this way. Just go ahead and pull it up like so. And this one. So, so the DVs are now disconnected. So, yeah, and yes, this is my stock charge pipe OEM one from the factory, and I'm at 160 something thousand miles that it has yet to crack. And these are on RBs, and yeah, I've been pushing a lot of boost, and these have yet to crack on this. I think most reason why sometimes they crack on people is because the way they tighten these down or something like that. Um, key is not to tighten it too much but snug enough so that it could create um a good seal on it especially with one of these so you don't have to like sit here and crank away at it so i guess that's why mine has yet to break yet so i'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this also so it's just turn and that's out the way this is going to be eliminated on my new setup since i'm not going to be using the stock inlet system anymore and it's going to be relocated over to the passenger side of the car so this is all cleared up and then what we're going to do is go down here and remove this sensor that's down here so just use a flathead and push the clip in and pull down so i'll do that in a second so that's all out this all out and yeah this check valve right here just go ahead and pull it out ah, let me use two hands so this is disconnected now and go ahead and pull this wire out right here this is also disconnected you the same color okay all right so yeah those are disconnected now just making sure that so i can remember so the three one goes up to this connector and then the one with four connections go down here to the this sensor down here so yeah so all you gotta do is just wiggle this around and then this will come right off the charge pipe so it's off now and just go ahead and snake this out and there we go So this is all the time I have today to work on this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop today. And then tomorrow, all I have to do really is to drop the fuel line, disconnect it from a high pressure fuel pump and remove some miscellaneous stuff like connections, make sure everything is not there, the ground wires. And yeah, then we'll move on to the mounts and then we could lift it out the car. So subscribe, comment, like, and I'll see y'all in the next video.